Have you answered the call that God has on your life? Listen, God has a call. He has a plan and a purpose for every single one of his children. But we have to answer that call with a yes. And does that happen overnight? No. Is that easy? No. It's a process. And it's one that we walk out with the Lord very personally. You know, it's a very personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that allows us to walk in the fullness of life that he has planned for us. Listen, the call of God is not one that is unattainable. It's a call that we can certainly attain, but it requires the help of the Holy Spirit. And it requires us being in the word and being in prayer. Like we're not going to walk out of the call of the Lord by accident. Okay, it's going to require some time and effort on our part. The first call that God calls us to is salvation. Listen, the call to salvation, it's a call to confess our sins, to repent and to place our full trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So right there, that is not easy, but it is doable, right? If you are saved, then you answered the call to salvation and thank God for his grace, for his mercy that he allows us to live in such a communion with him that we certainly don't deserve as sinful fallen people. But you know what? God loves us and through Jesus Christ, our relationship has been reconciled to God and therefore God, when he looks at us, he sees Jesus Christ. He sees his son. And we now have the righteousness of Christ. We're clothed in the righteousness of Christ. So therefore, we're righteous in God's sight. Thank you, Lord. The next call God has on our life is to sanctification. Listen, to bring our conversations, our conduct, and our character under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Again, not easy, but doable. Listen, if we bring our conversations under the lordship of Jesus Christ, there's going to be some things that we certainly will not say, right? And if we bring our conduct under the lordship of Jesus Christ, there's also going to be some things that we would not allow ourselves to do. And, you know, that's a good thing, though. If we think about this Christian life as all the don'ts, that we don't get to do, that's a wrong way of thinking. Listen, there is so much freedom in this Christian life, but we are not supposed to take our freedom in sin, right? That's what the word says, that we don't allow ourselves to manipulate God's grace and act a fool and just think, they'll forgive me because I'm under grace. That's not at all how we're supposed to act. Our conduct should be godly. It should be encouraging. It should be a witness to others. Amen. And the other thing is our character should be under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And our character develops over time. Like we have these things about us that we certainly don't like. There's some issues in our life that we just pray and wish we did not do. But it's only over time and through persistence and through intentionality and through study and following the Lord where we can remove these character flaws or these character traits from our life. And that's the only way to do it. Listen, for many years, I tried to change myself. Like I literally read probably every self-help book and, um, you know, I'd done the vision boards and not like those aren't good. Vision boards are good. But I used vision boards in order to accumulate material wealth. That's what was on my vision board. Everything that would show that I was living a successful life. You know, but we have to understand that it's the Lord that transforms us and changes us. Yes, there is a part we have to play. I mean, we have to be in his word. We have to be in prayer. But we can't just grit our teeth and push through these situations that we can't overcome on our own. You know, we may even have to fast. We have to recruit the prayers of our fellow believers, 
our sisters and brothers in Christ who help us overcome a stronghold. But it is doable when we put our full trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to transform us. And that is what has really been the pivotal moment for me in my life. You know, I used to try and fail, try and fail, get angry, try, fail, get angry, just beat myself up because things would not change. Like I could not make myself into a different person. But you know what? Christ has transformed my life. The first verse I ever memorized was Romans 12, 2 that says, do not conform to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to see what God's good and pleasing and perfect will is. Like we have to be intentional about being in the word so that it can transform our minds so that we can get a new way of thinking so that we can understand what our character and conduct should be and how our conversation should go. The only way to do that is through reading scripture. So is there any reason that you can give for not accepting the call that God has on your life? Listen, if you are not yielding to God, if you're not yielding to his call, then you have said no to God. Now, I know that might sound harsh, but listen, if we are not following the Lord, if we have not committed ourselves to being in the word, to being in prayer, to bringing our conversations in our conduct, in our character under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, then we have said no to the call God has on our life. So I just want to encourage you today to say yes. Say yes. Not because you're perfect, not because you're flawless, not because you're so great, but because God loves you and he wants you to walk in the abundant life that he has created for all of us to live. Listen, John 10, 10 says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and to give us life abundantly to the full till it overflows. So in order to live that abundant life, we need to be under the Lordship of Jesus Christ with our conversation, our conduct, and our character. And we will live a life that is far beyond anything that we could think or imagine when we are led and guided by the Lord. Listen to what Psalms 25, 4 through 5 says. It says, show me your way, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. Now, this is a verse that I am going to personally memorize and just declare over my life because I want to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit, by God, so that I can live the abundant life that Jesus Christ died for me to live. And I hope that you will do the same. You know, God doesn't issue calls for our consideration, okay? He issues calls for our surrender, for our obedience, and for our yes. Yes, Lord, what is it that you have for me to do for you? to bring you glory. What is it, Lord? I want to be obedient to that call. Sometimes his call is a simple, help that person, go here, do this, say this, encourage that person with my word, show her the love that I have for you through the love that you have for her. Listen, the call that God has on our life, though, it's a divine call based on the divine purpose of God. God wants us to fulfill the purpose that he has for our life. So he is patient with us. I mean, he's not going to wait forever because he doesn't need to wait forever. You are going to walk out the call that God has for your life when you are intimate with him, when you are reading his word, when you are praying, when you are following, when you are being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you will walk out the purpose that God has for your life. But listen to what 2 Peter 3, 9 says. It says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, 
not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God's divine call is also based on his divine wisdom. So no, we can't understand it from start to finish, you know, and therefore sometimes we can get overwhelmed or discouraged because we think that we are not walking in the way that he has us to go. Listen, the path that God has us walking on is not a straight path. We take dips and turns and we step off his path for a time, but he always is guiding us on that path, right? As long as we continue to refocus on him, as long as we continue to bring our yes and our obedience to him, he will guide us on that path, even when it looks like we are far off the path that God has originally called us to. Like when we first answer the call, we believe or we think that it's going to be the straight path, like it's going to be easy because we're in God's will. We're walking out the divine purpose that he has for our life. So we're not going to be having hard times or distractions or setbacks. And that's simply not true. God's path, it includes all of that, all of that. And if you've been walking this this road with him for any length of time, you know that it is not a straight path from call to destiny, from call to purpose. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes determination to follow and walk out the plan that God has for your life. His divine call is also based on God's personal plan for your life. Sometimes we can get distracted and discouraged when we take our eyes off God and we put it on other people and we think, well, she's way farther than I am. Or, you know, she is a new believer and God's using her in this mighty way. And here I am 10 years walking with the Lord and still struggling to find the path that God has for me. Listen, the path that God has for you, the divine call is very personal. You have no idea what somebody else has been through, and they have no idea what you have been through. So we must just keep our eyes focused on the Lord and not get caught off guard by the the calls of other people and get sidetracked and start comparing ourselves to them and just think that this call that God has on your life, you must have misunderstood it. You must have not heard him correctly. No. Stay on the path, stay focused, stay connected to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will walk this path, this plan that God has for your life. And um, you and God are the only one, you and Jesus Christ are the ones who are walking this path together. So don't look at what other people are doing because this divine call, it requires a personal commitment. Listen, nobody else is going to commit to God's plan for your life, except for you, okay? Nobody else can commit to it but you. So it's very personal. It's very intimate. It's very much between you and Jesus Christ. And when we understand that Jesus is our Savior, that he is our Lord, that he is our Master, then our response should be an unconditional yes to the call that he has on our life. Listen, he is our savior. He is our Lord and he is our master. We can trust him and we can follow him and we can be obedient to what it is that he has called us to do. God is responsible for everything past our yes. Does that take a little bit of pressure off you? I know it does for me. God is responsible for everything past the yes, okay? Our job is obedience. God's job is outcome, okay? We cannot determine the outcome 100%, okay? We think we know what's going to happen. We know what we want to happen. But our job is obedience. And God's job is outcome. God equips us to fulfill every task. 
that he calls us to do. Yes, he's going to call you to do some things that you just think that you cannot do. And you know what? On your own, you can't do it. You can't do it on your own. I mean, this is a divine call. This is God we're talking about. And yes, there are going to be some things that he asks us to do that we literally think are impossible. But you know what? We serve the God of the impossible and he can do it. He will equip you for what he called you to do. And yes, sometimes that call involves great challenges. But listen, God will never leave you nor forsake you. You can trust him. It might be challenging, but friend, let me tell you, it's worth it. Listen, God promises that his presence will always be with us and that his power is readily available for us no matter what. So I just want to encourage you today to answer the call that God has on your life. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, that you care about each one of us individually and specifically. Lord, help us to say yes to the call that you have on our life and help us to walk in obedience. And Lord, when challenges arise, help us to stay focused on you in the call that you have on our life. And Lord, you will help us walk it out. Lord, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope you enjoyed that word today. And I just want to encourage you to stop back by next Wednesday because I will be here with another encouraging message. All right. Take care. God bless.